Now that we've seen what plywood and bolts do, we need to figure out a way to connect the two together. Let me show you what our problem is. This is a typical cripple wall. Now notice that right here, this piece of wood called the mud sill, it's a full six inches going this way. And then these are the two by four studs that form the cripple wall. And those are only two by fours. So what that does is it leaves a gap between here, the edge of the mud sill, and the two by four, and that causes a problem. What the problem is, is when you put the plywood on it, the plywood ends up sitting on top of the mud sill. So you see right here, it's just sitting right on top of the mud sill. It's not connected to the bolts. So we need to make sure that the plywood is connected to the bolts. Now here's one method right here, what's been done here. It's been the mud sill right here has been flush cut, flush cut with the two by fours here. So what happened is the contractor came here, flushed, cut this right out. And so now we have a notch here. And with that notch, the mud sill is flush with the two by fours. And then we can simply nail the piece of plywood up right here where you see it. It's nailed straight into the mud sill and we've connected the plywood to the bolts. These old houses are made of old growth redwood. And so this mud sill right here that we cut, it's also made out of thousand year old, old growth redwood. So we cut this notch into it. And then we went and we put our plywood on the cripple wall and then we nailed it into the old growth redwood. And when we did that, we made a very high quality nail to mud sill connection. And that's why whenever possible, we try to use the flush cut method since we've been able to attach our nails and our plywood to this very high quality wood right here that you can see is very, very dense redwood. Now compare that to the new growth wood. You can see the old growth redwood is much higher quality than the new wood you would get now. So in every retrofit we do, we always try to use the flush cut method whenever we can. Here's another method by which the plywood is attached to the bolts, and that's with blocks. So you see a block right here between the two by fours, another block here between the two bys, here and here, and then these bolts go straight through the blocks into the concrete, and you'll see another one right here that goes straight through the blocks into the concrete. And when that's all done, what we do is we take the piece of plywood and we nail it straight into the blocks that you would see behind here. Now remember these blocks are made out of the very low quality wood. Another very similar method is to use staples instead of nails. We still have the blocks, but we just use staples instead. Now that's done to prevent the blocks from splitting. The last system is the reverse block method. And in this system, what we do is we take the piece of plywood and we nail this two by four to it from the back. So from this back end, we'll nail it just like you see here. The plywood is here. The two by four is here, and then there were nails that were put in back this way from the back side. Now we take this full assembly right here, and we take it and we put it on top of the mud sill. So here's our mud sill right here. There's a two by four. We've nailed that two by four to the mud sill itself. Then we've uh, added all the nails that we needed. And then remember, there's a row of nails that comes through the plywood into the back of the two by four where you can't see it. This is a very, very good system. 20 years ago, I was on an International Code Council committee writing a seismic retrofit building code for the San Francisco Bay Area known as Standard Plan A, which is used to this day. And as a committee member, I had access to structural engineers and specialists I would not normally have access to. So I was able to access the lead structural engineer at a research lab at the American Plywood Association who developed all the standards for the building code. And so this specialist uh, looked at all these different methods and told me which ones he thought were the best ones. So first he said that the flush cut method, the one he would prefer, second would be the reverse block method, Third would be the stapled blocking method, and fourth would be the nailed blocking method. So we always try to use the, the first two, the flush cut method and the reverse block method, and we shy away from the other two. And we are the only contractors I'm aware of who use those first two methods. And I suggest that you ask any of our competitors which one they use, and usually you'll find that they use a nailed blocking method.